It's not about a genre or about um, even sometimes a specific character. It's if I feel that there is an honesty and a sort of beating heart that exists underneath material. Um, you know, so often you can say, oh, well, I really want to play a cop, so, but that isn't really, to me, the reason why, for instance, a movie like End of Watch, I gravitated towards it, because not only somebody like David Ayer, who I think is so brilliant as a writer and, um, and, and as a director, but I think what really drew me to it was the relationship and the heart in the middle of this film, you know, I mean, we've seen so many cop genre movies and you know, this is different because of that friendship. And the friendship could be taken out of that car and put in any other context. And I think I look for that in everything I do. Um, some sort of sense of um, honesty and truth um, between characters. Someone said to me once that like a, and I know that being my mother being a screenwriter, she's not going to agree with me on this, but that you know, great movies have been made out of mediocre scripts and not great movies have been made out of great scripts, you know, so <clears throat> there is something in that process because there, there is a general kind of philosophy that you need a great script, which I agree with. <laughs> I totally agree with. But ultimately, I think you need an energy. You need a drive and a belief in what you're doing. And that, that belief, whatever that is, can change an entire um, film. It can change anything, really. For a long time I was looking for a sense of resolution at the end of a movie or the sense of resolution at the end of a scene or, you know, feeling like, as Chris Cooper once said to me when I was working with him, is never having any regrets. I think that's impossible, you know, in a way. There is no resolve, you know. The thing about making a movie in particular, and then I think actually being on stage now, it's kind of illuminated more when you're on stage, is the sense that you never fully get there, you know, and, and it's a constantly searching for that thing. You get behaviors and pieces and it comes together, and a, but you never really do. It's, 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 you know, it's, um, I think there are, there, there are specific instances, like I remember trying to break through this scene in this movie I did with David Fincher's movie Zodiac, where, um, it's raining and I run up to this door and um, I'm trying to get information and we shot the scene twice and we shot it probably over, I had 50 takes of it and I remember I never really got that scene. And if I did, or if he did, I never did, which is an interesting thing as an actor. Education is so essential because there's no way of knowing what good material is or knowing if a story is original, or knowing what makes a story original, or know how to interpret a story, or even to help if you don't have a solid education. Doesn't mean you have to go out and get it, like from a common institution, but to educate yourself is the most important thing. Otherwise, you'll be making blind choices that you're not sure about. Through all the beauty that is what I've I, th I can see from somebody like who I admire so deeply, someone like Paul Newman, or, that your life is 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 everything. And you know, with all of the like the lights and all the stuff and the, the all-consuming thing that is the business of making movies, you know, so often you can get sidetracked from that because it's so enticing and amazing and amazing people involved. But ultimately, your life, your family, and those things are. Um, are the priority. So if anything, from somebody like Paul Newman, that's, that's what, um, that's what I learned, have learned so far.